must be listed. Um, my name is Lina Vila Cote. I'm a patron here in Nacho. My husband was uh, the Philippine ambassador here in the years 2003 to 2005. And I lived here in Korea for two years on account of my husband's um, occupation. I have heard about Julia Kim many years before coming here. In fact, I've read about her from a local newspapers in the Philippines. When we arrived here for an assignment here, um, the first thought that came to my head was to look for Julia Kim, the Blessed Mother of Naji. So it was to my great surprise that when I asked people about Julia Kim, the Blessed Mother, and Naju, the only thing that they could recognize was Naju. I thought that an apparition like what's going on here in Naju, that it would be all over the newspapers, especially here in Korea. Unfortunately, that was not really the case. And so um, when I found out from my husband's secretary about Naju, she said, you, you know, you can take a bus going there. So my husband and I decided to come here one Saturday morning. So when we came here, I was trying to, to ask someone. In fact, we went to a Catholic church nearby to ask about Julia Kim. The guy was so irritated and he was shaking his head and he was showing, showing me away. So there was really nothing that I could find out about Naju. We just decided to just go back to Seoul. But back in Seoul, I found out from some priests I met that it was really a taboo to speak about Julia, especially in the presence of the bishop. I find it very afflicting because it is trying to, you know, that, that attempt is really trying to snuff the life out of something very divine that everybody could benefit from. But my persistence in meeting Mama Julia, by the grace of God, was granted. When I met her for the first time, she was all smiles and exuberant and talking quite fast as if there were so many things I should know immediately. Her presence exuded something divine to my mind and of course, one cannot escape that heavenly scent that she exudes. That first meeting I had with Julia, I have seen so many things about her that inspired me and my, why I keep coming back to, to Naju. Well, I, I kept coming back afterwards. And, um, and in all those occasions, I have witnessed her, just like what you, what you witnessed this evening, I have witnessed her talk about her life. And I believe that that is her mythology in teaching each and every one of us of a shortcut to heaven, which is the five spiritualities. Five spiritualities, I understand, is our mother's prescription to rid us all of everything evil and a shortcut to heaven. I suggest that you get a copy of it for you to understand this prescribed spiritual exercise and um, to read it from cover to cover. With that, you can get a deeper understanding of how we unknowingly please the devil by our normal reactions to a given difficulty. The Blessed Mother corrects this by offering the five spiritualities through Julia's life story, okay. how we can turn our daily challenges and difficulties into something really beautiful like a bouquet of flowers that we can offer to our mother. I also witnessed how untiringly she would meet, just like tonight, we will be meeting her. She would untiringly meet all the pilgrims, never missing even a single one, to hug, kiss, and touch the part of their body with ailment while praying. Then when most of the pilgrims were tucked in their seats on their way home, she would still be here, unperturbed, pray and to willingly suffer unimaginable pains for the spiritual and physical benefits of the pilgrim. Way back in 2005, it was a time that I was about to say goodbye to Julia because my husband's um, tour of duty has come to a conclusion. I came here hoping to experience once more the beautiful experiences or the feeling that one would normally experience when they come to Naju. It was at the time that I received a very, very special grace. Julia was kind of pointing her finger on my collar and I didn't know what was going on. And she made me turn and she was combing my hair with her, with the back part of my head with her, with her hand because I had some blood on my blouse. And Julia, in complete exclamation, she said, you just received the blood of Jesus. My question then was, my initial reaction then was, why? It wasn't because I wanted to question God, but because I wanted to find out 
no. what what his will is. After that occasion, um, I came again, and this time, I finally had to say goodbye to Julia. And um, in order for me not to forget Naju, she decided to give me a statue from her room. She gave it a long kiss, and then signed it, and gave it to me. I kept that image in my house, and I always cry to her whenever I have some problems, and true enough, the Blessed Mother, I would feel the love of the Blessed Mother and her help in making me see how I can get out of a certain problems. I do have so much things to say, but let me conclude because we don't really have so much time now. You know, last Friday I was here. I came here with a fellow pilgrim and we prayed the Stations of the Cross. After we prayed at the Statue of the Resurrected Christ, this lady stopped me, my fellow um, pilgrim. Yes. She stopped me and pointed to the sky. She said, look, do you see the silhouette of the resurrected Christ? Yes, what is his name? And um, the sun was right behind the silhouette of Jesus, of the resurrected Christ. Suddenly it moved. And then when it moved, I could look at it so directly. And the sun was spinning, emitting some colors. And the dominant color in the middle was blue. I told Father Sue about it and he said, you know, that's just one of those occurrences. What is important is the conversion of heart, as according to him. And so, but deep in my heart, I knew that the Blessed Mother must be calling me for something. Because I know that all graces bestowed should never be wasted. So if you receive any grace from the Blessed Mother, use it. Never stop proclaiming the reality of Nigel, the love of the birth of the Mary Mother, and her resolve to bring us all to heaven. Thank you.